What's going on, Blackish fam? Uh, it's your boy B back at you with another reaction. We're going to do another intellectual breakdown of Black Thoughts. Uh, this is Black Thought in Quest Love. Uh, I guess they did an intro for a performance in 2020 called The Roots Picnic Live. Uh, it was a, a virtual experience. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even know anything about it. So shout out to the comment section because I've been put on a lot of new artists and a lot of new songs to check out that way. And uh, somebody was like, yo, uh, I don't think many people have ever reacted to this. Uh, and he just dropped so much knowledge. And so I'm ready for a little trivia. And I, you know, I love my history. I love political science. And, uh, you know, Black Dot always brings it and uh, puts your, you think you know anything about history and trivia. Man, try to break down a Black Thought song, uh, you know, live, right? Uh, we, we, I, I try not to research much. <clears throat> So a lot of times I don't know anything about what's going on. I just want to hear it, uh, see if we could break it down. Uh, but, you know, we don't have the lyrics to this, and I can't, uh, with the roots, a lot of their stuff is uh, protected under, uh, there's copyright protection. Uh, so we, we're going to be able to hear it, and we're going to do it old school and just listen to this. Uh, let's check it out. Get your hands together. Come on, give it up. Okay, so they're outside like <laughs> Uh-huh. Two for team. Twenty one. It almost sounds like that. I know I can be what I wanna be, right? That Nas. Get your hands together. Come on, give it up. See right there. Uh -huh. I know I can be what I wanna be. Two for team. Twenty one pound. Yo, and uh, for those that don't know, 215, that's an area code in Philly, right? He's shouting out his area in Philly. I said, memory back's too strong to try a job with. I probably fry your omelets on some calm shit. Long firearms holding what I write a song with. Right or wrong, moving right along. It's a higher form of convo with the gods I'm in dialogue with. I hear the voice of the announcer signing off, rock mining off, through a monotone <laughs> on your doorstep. You know, see how he just drops little gems, and I love this because there's there's no possible way your average hip hop listener, especially a young buck, is ever going to understand. Uh, he almost makes you reference things, right? Or he wants to. I always tell the young kids. I raise a bunch of teenagers. Uh, I have my own kids, but I married uh, someone that I went to grammar school with, and she had older kids. And then we took in some strays along the way. So I got a house full of teenagers, teenage boys, minority teenage boys, right? And I always tell them, man, if you don't understand a reference, it's so important that you Google it then and there. Because from that point forward, I guarantee you will always understand the meaning of that. It's so important because I, as I started uh, going through Black Thought, so you look down, we have a playlist. We went through quite a bit of his work. Every time we don't know something, I stop right then and there and I try to learn it. And he references a lot of the same things. Uh, so it's, it's important when you're doing breakdowns because with Black Thought, now, I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but this station, it's, it's not just called Blackish University. It's modern day griots. And you might be asking, what exactly is a griot? It's someone in Africa that would pass down generation uh, information from one generation to the next, right? Especially before there was a written uh, history. Now, they would pass down information from by dance, by uh, singing, by poetry. And we have to ask ourselves, who's doing that? right now, right? Who's doing that for our generation? Yes, this isn't Africa, but our school system doesn't teach us a black, about black history. Our school system doesn't teach us about who we are. Uh, and let's be honest, Black History Month is a bunch of uh, Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King quotes on Instagram. Um, so I think it's important to think, you know, where are our kids getting information about themselves? That's why I created this channel. Yes, we're building a platform uh, by doing a lot of hip hop reactions, but I think there's a lot of good information. Someone like Black Thought is putting you on knowledge and teaching you about the ways of yesteryear. All you have to do is listen, right? And that's exactly what griots did. They used music, they used song, they used dance to pass down large amounts of information, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, I always say, if you were to ask a griot, you know, who I are, they're like, yo, uh, your dad's ugly and your mama's a hoe, right? And that's why you are the way you are. Uh, but they, they didn't sugarcoat anything, right? And I think that's so important about our information 
about our history. We just need to lay the facts out and let people make their own decisions. Uh, yo, the history of America is ugly, right? Right along, it's a higher form of convo with the gods I'm in dialogue with. I hear the voice of the announcer signing off, Rachmaninoff, do a mock. Yeah, when he says Rachmaninoff, right, that's uh, Sergei Rachmaninoff. Um, He's someone that died uh, early, uh, I, I believe by 1950, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but he was a Russian composer. Um, he was a conductor. A lot of people consider him one of the finest people to ever play the piano. Um, but uh, it's like uh, Russian classical music, if you would. Gods, I'm in dialogue with. I hear the voice of the announcer signing off. Rock mining off. Do a monotop on your doorstep. A bullet. If you knew he's a Russian... <clears throat> If you knew he was a Russian composer or a Russian classical music, and you can also tie it to a Molotov, right? Now, a lot of people are familiar if you play GTA or any game, a Molotov bomb, right? Um, uh, so a lot of people can tie that back to Russia if they understand uh, Sergei uh, Rachmaninoff. Uh, just important to know the reference to understand the, 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 what he's actually trying to say. I hear the voice of the announcer signing off, rock mining off, through a monotop on your doorstep, a bullet from a Glock tore through your cortex, mine off the melanin. They all relish in the way I'm Ralph McDaniels meets Ralph Ellison. Yo, see, again, he's dropping names, and it's, it's really important to know his names. And I, I don't know exactly what he said there. He said, uh, a, bullet, uh, a bullet from a Glock tore through your cortex. A cortex can mean a, a variety of things. I'm assuming he meant your like cerebral cortex, um, which means he was aiming like a dome shot, right? Monarch of Melanin, <coughs> I'm not sure if he's actually referencing it, but you know, I do a search, I, I, I search for a lot of products because I have obviously a beautiful beard, right? Uh, I don't have really hair anymore that I keep, but you know, I got this amazing beard, and I, you know, I always reference people. Are always like, "Oh man, what do you put in your beard?" I always do a shout out to coming to America, and I'm like, "Only the finest fruits and berries, right?" But I look to support black-owned businesses. That um, you know, my my hair, I'm mixed, right? My mom is black, my dad is Mexican, um, but I have this weird straight hair, which is why uh, low-key trivia. It's why I always kept it short. My hair is extremely straight, and it looks odd. Uh, I actually look really uh, Indian or Pakistani. And my hair goes down and I can just do like this and it's just it's, it's beautiful but it looks unnatural um, so I've always kept it short and had some sort of bald fade um, but when, uh, anyway when I was searching for beard products I found a company called Monarchs Monarch of Melanin uh, you could catch them on Facebook it's a black owned business and they create products for your head for your hair for different styles of hair different textures of hair so with him saying uh, a bullet from my Glock Right, he's, he's talking about uh, a pistol, you know, he's talking about that thing, right? He's talking about uh, it through, uh, tore through your cortex, it says monarch of melanin. He could be referencing uh, something that you would put in your head, similar like he puts that, that lock to your head. Um, but what I think is really interesting is he, he actually referenced uh, Ralph McDaniels and uh, Ralph Ellison. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Ralph McDaniels is. I'll break it down. Uh, for the younger cats, uh, back in the day, TVs weren't, you know, those big TVs, uh, they're not that ancient, right? You could only go back to, like, my childhood. I grew up with a big TV, and on the top, you had two, five, seven, nine, and then all of a sudden, it jumped to, like, 11, 12, 13, and then like WHM or something, and then you could change the channels below to 32, 50, 66, whatever. Well, there was something called the Box Music Network you control, and you can actually call in. Keep in mind, there's no uh, cell phones, there's no internet at this time. So you can call in and press numbers, and uh, you would watch the state. It only came on like the shittiest stations, like Channel 13. It was staticky, and you had to move the antenna but you can watch music videos. And for those of us that, you know, I grew up poor inner city Chicago, but we didn't have cable, right? This was one of the only ways that we could see music videos. And then you'd watch, like, I remember that uh, Silk. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, man, I, uh, but you know, or, or Color Me Bad, right? I wanna sex you up, tick tock, you don't stop. But, uh, or, or Silk, uh, man, I can't think of the song for the life of me. Uh, but that was like something to play back to back because numerous people 
re requesting it. And if you did, it would keep, it'd just keep playing, right? Well, Ralph McDaniels, um, this is an older cat. He's older, 20 years older than me. I'm 40. Well, I'm 39, so he's at least 60, right? Um, and he was a, a music video director, a DJ, a VJ, if you would. Um, and he co-created and co-host uh, the music video progr program. Its technical name was the Video Music Box. Um, that's just a sick reference. I, I don't even know what happened to the box. Just all of a sudden, as TV started, um, well, in the information age started changing, right? We started having access to the internet. Um, it was just so much easier. You just didn't have a need for something like that. Um, Ralph Ellison, if I'm not mistaken, he's referring to uh, Ralph Waldo Ellison. Um, this is a dude that used to write books. Uh, that's really uh, I, that's most I know about him. I know he had a classic book called The Invisible Man um, that actually won quite a few awards. But um, he's, he has a collection of like political books, social books. Um, he has a variety of essays. Um, but uh, the New York Times once considered him a god. Uh, amongst uh, America's uh, like literature, if you would. Um, so, you know, just uh, something to, to reference uh, or something to know for future reference, but I'll run it back. But I think that's uh, what he said. He said, he, oh, you, you'll find this a lot with Black Thought is he says, I'm like this person meets this person. Now, you know, it's almost saying like, yo, if this person and this person had a baby, they look like you, ugly on this side, ugly on, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that's how he, he gets you to think and gets you thinking about something you might need to look up or reference uh, to understand your par part of history, right? Tore through your cortex, monarch of melanin. They all relish in the way I'm Ralph McDaniels meets Ralph Ellison. The fine arts is elegant, darts is heaven sent. Official intelligence, present it to your bottom stopper. Tell them cops it's too late to talk to me proper. Them South Philly no. boys is who... He said, yo, it's too late to uh, talk to me proper, right? They might find out who you are, uh, right? And then they want to treat you better. Um, we see that a lot. Yeah, there's a video with, the, uh, I think it was a Florida state's attorney getting pulled over. Uh, and uh, she's like, why did you run my plates? And they're like, and they realize it's her. And she's like, give me your cards, right? Uh, there has to be probable cause, right? Um, but a lot of times people will put you in a box until they understand that, oh, you, oh he's an intelligent, well-spoken, educated guy. Um, yeah, I, I study constitutional law, right? I study judicial politics. Uh, I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, unreasonable search and seizure and, and so, so some of these things, right? I could reference the Miranda rights and they're like, oh, well, uh, they, you know, they start to, oh, it's like, yo, you're, you're treating me nice now. Why? Because I'm well-spoken, uh, because I can articulate uh, what I really need to say. How did you treat the guy in front of me? And what about the people behind me? It's so important. Uh, that we speak up, right? Silence is violence, bro. You bought a stopper. Tell them cops it's too late to talk to me proper. Them South Philly boys is who off Jimmy Hoffa. Ooh. My hands in the balance. Uh, Jimmy Hoffa, right? Uh, a lot of people, his real name was James Hoffa, but he went by Jimmy. Uh, there's an excellent movie that's with uh, was it Robert De Niro where he plays Jimmy Hoffa. Uh, but basically, Jimmy Hoffa, uh, he disappeared uh, in 1975, if you would. Um, he's actually declared dead. He was declared dead the year I was born, 1982, but his body was never found. Uh, most people know him as the uh, American, uh, he fought for labor unions, right? He served as the, the president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Um, Teamsters, if you, you know, if you guys know anything or have ever worked with um, labor unions, they're huge, right? Um, so he had a lot of influence, but he was also working with the mob. He had a lot of dealings going on, but uh, Jimmy Hoffa was not a dude that you wanted to mess with back in the day. Uh, you would think of him as somebody with like mafia connections, uh, very, um, uh, him saying himself, Philly boys is who off Jimmy Hoffa. We really don't know what happened to Jimmy Hoffa, but uh, I believe there was information over the last few years that said uh, some gangsters or people in, in Philadelphia knew where his body was. Um, so it's, it's, it's awesome that he's referencing that again. He's just pointing you to parts in history that he thinks you should know. Um, and that, that's awesome. That's what we're here for. We're going to catch these bars. We're catching all of them, baby. Let's go. Intelligence. Present it to your bottom stopper. Tell them cops it's too late to talk to me proper. Them South Philly boys is who off Jimmy Hoffa. What hangs in the balance for the talent to Mr. Trotter and the 215. Right, that's his name, uh, Tariq Trotter. I believe it's actually Tariq Luffman, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, Trotter. Jimmy Hoffa, what hangs in the balance for the talent to Mr. Trotter and the two for team Mott's a fine crew. What could kill you in five words that's not a high crew? What's the most powerful book? Bro, that beat change is just nice, man. Quest Love is so nice. I posted a video yesterday, old school, and these cats are in an alley in Philadelphia tagging up a building with some white boys and uh, 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 Quest Love is beatboxing and uh, Black Thought just kills it. Freestyle just off the dome. It's in the same playlist here. It's probably just the next video. Make sure you check that out. And yo, if you're a fan of intellectual breakdowns like this, uh, make sure you show some love and subscribe to the channel. We're already at uh, four to 500 subscribers and we really just started at the start of 2022. So show some love. We're really gonna grow this channel now, these are intellectual breakdowns and reactions of some of the most lyrically dense artists. Um, it's, uh, you know, like Toby Wigway says, and we do a lot of Toby Wigway. He says where education meets entertainment. And uh, there's such a void in the market right now where people are just bobbing their heads and some of the best YouTubers. And, I, yo, I, I love, you know, I used to listen to uh, No Life Shack, Lost in Vegas. I'm a fan, right? Um, but, I, you know, sometimes I want to know more. Like, I know he snapped. I can hear it. But I want to, I, I need to hear what he said. And I think it's so important to understand the context so that we can break it down and really understand and get their, their actual meaning out to the masses. That's how we share knowledge. Again, consider ourselves modern day griots, right? Uh, but yo, I'm a fan, especially of Lost in Vegas. If you guys don't know the channel, I think there's something like a million plus subscribers. But uh, their breakdowns, uh, like I used to like um, the Black Thought uh, freestyle before I had a channel. Uh, at, whenever I listened to the Black Thought freestyle, the Funkmaster Flex freestyle, I would always listen to their version of it uh, because they were the the ones that did the best breakdown from what I heard, right? Um, but yo, I, I, I love what, the, uh, you know, I always reference um, intelligent thinking, right? They call their the, the, the free thinkers, right? Uh, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a fan, but this is something we do. Um, where it's not just music. We break down uh, spoken word. We break down poems, uh, which actually is why I wanted to reference this. He said, what can kill you in five words? That's not a haiku. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know what a haiku is, it's a, a Japanese poetic form, right? It consists of three lines and five syllables in the first line, seven in the second line, and five in the third. When I was in grammar school, we used to have to write haikus and uh, uh, so it's just, it's really interesting that he's referencing that. Uh, it used to be considered, <clears throat> um, uh, it, it used to be good, considered, I think it was called like a tenka, um, but it actually became its own form of poetry, uh, poetry um, in the 17th century. So a, a haiku, the most important thing to uh, recognize is that it's three lines, five syllables in the first, seven in the second, and then five in the third. And that's what makes it a haiku. Elegant dogs as heaven sent, official intelligence presented to you by the stopper. Tell them cops it's too late to talk to me proper. Them South Philly boys is who off Jimmy Hopper. What hangs in the balance for the talent to Mr. Trotter and a two for team my survive crew? Who can kill you with five words? A savant is normally somebody that's uh, highly intelligent, right? Uh, 215, we have already went over. That's his area code in Philly. Not a high school. What's the most powerful book? That's not the Bible. They say do as I say do, but not as I do. It's about time we held history liable for survival of the most fit. Let a focus get a people more than only hope for the hopeless. Yo. Knowing the police headquarters is the culprit. Floods drive a lot of the focus and don't miss. I give a fuck. Oh, he's saying so much there. He said, what's the most powerful book that's not the Bible. Um, I don't know what he's referencing there. I know that he was, uh, his family, his parents uh, were the members of the, the nation of Islam. Uh, I would imagine he considers himself Muslim as well. Um, so I would imagine that he's not referring to the Bible, uh, right? He's probably referring to the Quran. Um, but I, I, he said, they say, do as I say do, but not as I do, right? Now that's like when, you, when you're teaching a child, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Now uh, you're trying to teach them to be better, right? Um, yo, I, I like that. He said, uh, knowing the police headquarters is the culprit, slug spiral out of the four fifth and don't miss, right? He's talking about the four five. Police headquarters is the culprit. Slug spiral out of the four fifth and don't miss. I give a fuck about Confederate flags. I got a heart more darker than America's path. A Confederate flag, right? That was uh, back to the Civil War in the South. Those are people that typically 
uh, they wanted to keep slavery, right? That's normally the, yeah, there's a lot about uh, the Confederate flag, but uh, normally it's disrespectful because these are people that uh, hurt our people, right? There was a, a cycle of oppression and uh, poverty and all the things that came from slavery, I think it represents, that's why it's so offensive to other people. Um, you know, so I see it and it's just like, like do you, you see a noose, uh, right? Do you get scared when you see a noose? No. It's what that noose represents. It's the person holding the noose, right? The, that's who I'm scared of. I don't. I don't care about a noose in itself. Oh, Jesse Smollett. That he'll forever be known as the noose. People more than only hope for the hopeless. Knowing the police headquarters is the culprit. Slugs travel out of the fourth fifth and don't miss. I give a fuck about Confederate flags. I got a heart more darker than America's past. My heart is far. Chris Paul, the part Maddox, the bats, and just Yo. shine like a. He did it again, but he said, I love that quote. He said, I got a heart more darker than America's past, right? Uh, you can uh, talk about nationalism and <clears throat> patriotism, but I think we all have to agree that the history of America, man, it's, it, it, it was built on the backs of slaves, right? Now, think about it. If I started a business that was similar to Amazon, but I went to somewhere in the world and I pulled hundreds, if not thousands of workers to build this company for me, I would have an unfair advantage, right? Think about that. Uh, I, but why? Because the profits are all mine. I'm barely paying them. They're, they're barely getting by. I don't care about their well-being. Well, one would argue that if somebody called you out on your bullshit and they said, yo, you can't have slaves. It's an unfair advantage. And you had to uh, uh, basically tear things down and recreate, uh, it wouldn't be as profitable. But also you owe something to those slaves that built that company for you. Because if now you're a multi-billion dollar business, uh, you built it on the backs of these other people and you boosted yourself. That's why they say you're getting over on people, right? Um, and America did that. We, Yeah, we were profitable. Yeah, we were one of the strongest nations and we still are. But why is that, right? At, at whose expense? And did we ever compensate them? Now you'll see that I have a, a video uh, that talks about reparations. Uh, a lot of calculations say that every black American in the United States that came from a slave is owed $350,000. Um, know, we were promised 40 acres and a mule. We actually have uh, a legal uh, 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 claim, right, uh, to 40 acres and a mule and what that would be the equivalent to today. Um, I argue I don't know that the government will ever <clears throat> give us what's due, um, but there's other ways to uh, to to to, to uh, do re handle reparations, right? I think of opportunity, right? Make it so you can uh, make it easier for maybe Black Americans to get home loans or school loans, or maybe they don't have to maybe eliminate student debt. Um, there's so many things that we can do that can help boost up and create wealth. Because uh, what happens a lot of these. If we would have had 40 acres and a mill way back when, we had that ability to create generational wealth. We can pass that down and we improve society. We improve what we're doing in the world, right? It becomes easier for the next generations. Uh, yo, uh, run that back because I think he said Chris Parker and Malik Shabazz. Better in flags, I got a heart. More darker than America's past. My bar is part. Chris Parker, part, not a Shabazz. And just oh, that, that's sick. Uh, Chris Parker is actually uh, comes from where I come from. I'm from Chicago and not Chicagoland suburbs. I'm from Chicago. I'm from, I was, grew up in the Humble Park area and then uh, Logan Square area before I, I went away about an hour and a half west of Chicago uh, to the suburbs to attend Northern Illinois University. Um, but Chris Parker, <clears throat> he's from Chicago. <clears throat> and this cat began playing drums as like a baby. Um, and then he started doing professional gigs at like 10 or 11 years old before he was a teenager. And then when he was like not even 20, uh, he began recording and touring with like some of the best artists um, uh, really out there in the, the, uh, the New York scene, right? The music scene. Um, I believe he's actually the person that uh, handled the dr drums um, on Saturday Night Live. I like how Quest Love is with the Roots, right? I believe he was with Saturday Night Live, which is huge. Um, but he's worked with some of the greats, and I think he's more well known for that. I know he's worked with James Brown. He's worked with uh, Salt and Peppa. What a man! What a man! What a mighty good man! A mighty mighty good one, right? Uh, Miles Davis, Patti LaBelle, Michael, Billy Holiday. 
um, Quincy Jones, right? Uh, there's a lot of people that he's worked with. Uh, so that's a shout out to Chris Parker. And again, shout out Chicago. Um, now Malik Shabazz, uh, that's, he's an attorney in that. Right? He's, he's actually a very controversial figure. If you actually Google uh, Malik Shabazz or you want to learn about him, uh, you know, the history is a little bit tainted, but yes, he is an attorney, uh, but he was, most people know him as he was the new chairman of the new Black Panther Party. Um, and he's currently the national president of uh, what's called Black Lawyers for Justice. Um, so, but controversial person, I know a few years ago, I was watching the speech and he was like, kill these people, kill their kids, kill their grandmas, like that. And it's like, eh. You know, that's a really extreme view, man. It's like, I, I like the Black Panther Party and what they stood for, but I'm talking about the Black Pan Panther Party of self-defense, uh, you know, right? Of, uh, what was that, 1966 they started. Uh, but, yo, just important to know your history. Black Confederate flags, I got a heart More darker than America's past My bars spark, Chris Parker fought Not a Shabazz and just shine like a treasure Taken out of the trash, but dig it It gets deep like a bass guitar The beat Bass guitar, right? Doom, 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 doom That's how deep it gets, right? I'm cool like that I groove like that. I move like that. Do -doom 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 -doom. You know, people that wear hats like mine at the jazz club. Ba boom, 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 boom. Right? Now that's what he's talking about. Things never say the taste is off. The CDC the chase the caucus past. My bars spark. Chris Parker part now like some bass and just shine like a treasure taken out of the trash. But dig it, it gets deep like a bass guitar. The things never say the taste is off. The CDC the chase the cough back to where your face was lost. <laughs> What did CDC call that? That's the Center for Disease Control, um, where they, they try to trace where you've been and who you might have infected, right? He said the C done C, C done C, CDC done traced the cough back, right? Talking about COVID, a reference to COVID. Um, but f funny, he says the fiends never say the taste is off, right? The fiends love the product. Guitar. The fiends never say the taste is off. The CDC then trace the cough back to where your face was lost at. And press six, nine, the cough back. Yo, that's so deep, man, because back in the day before cell phones, uh, you know, we didn't call it a hashtag, right? Hashtag Black Thought, hashtag Black Thought Reactions. No, we didn't do all that. That hashtag, that was actually called a pound, right? And it, it did certain, it had certain functions on your cell phone. So if you did a, a star six, seven, that means that you can call someone and it was a restricted number. If you got a call and you didn't know who called because there was no caller ID, you'd pick it up and it'd be as useful as this, right? It didn't say anything. You'd be like, hello, click. Well, you can do star six, nine, and it would immediately call back that number. Wouldn't, uh, yeah, I think it would disclose the number seven, seven, three, three, one, seven, five, four, two, seven. And then you, yo, someone just called me and hang up. Who's this? Who? Who? <laughs> right? That was Star 6 9 back in the day for those uh, that ever knew the world before cell phones. The taste is off. The CDC, the trace the call back to where your faith was lost at. And press 6 9 to call back. What did Jake's provide bricks? What would you call that? Some Freemason type shit? What would you call that? Now we can swan dive into this and just fall back. I face time with the victims. They can just fall Ooh. back. I'm like, what is the gift to the man who's got everything? <laughs> Yo, no, that beat is just so sick, man. Shout out to Quest Love, not just with the drums, but DJing. Man, it's just so sick hearing real hip hop, right? He's saying so much there, right? After the CDC, uh, he's talking about uh, providing bricks, uh, Freemason shit. I think most of you know who Freemasons are. Um, but yo, he's just uh, he's just riding this beat, man. Man who's got everything. Freedom is above and beyond DuPont's registry. You ain't racing with uh, DuPont's registry. That's a, a high end book. It's a magazine like Auto Trader, but for wealthy, right? Uh, so you, you're going to look at Maseratis, Maybachs, uh, Benz, right? Different level high-end high vehicles, Hummers, H1 Hummers. Now, I know H3, but that's a Dodge Neon, right? Now, we're not talking about H3. I'm talking about an H1. Now, I actually own an H1. Um, just, a, you know, low-key trivia for you guys. Um, but that's what the du DuPont registry is. He's like, yo, that's not freedom. Right, having unlimited amounts of cash—that's not freedom, uh, you know. So, so what's freedom? Let's see if he's gonna get to it. 
or reference that. Dive into this and just fall back. I face time with the victims that was just all black. I'm like, what is the gift to the I face time with the victims, right? So he's talking about like facing time in the penitentiary or in the prison system, but also FaceTime, right? When you hold up your phone and you can FaceTime with someone, it's just a play on words. Yo, that's, that's low key, but great bar. What would you call that? Some Freemason type shit? What would you call crack? Now we can swine dive into this and just fall back. I FaceTime with the victims that was just all black. I'm like, what is the gift to the man who's got everything? Freedom is above and beyond DuPont's registry. You ain't racing with the baton, you not getting me. Where you rotating is not the proximity. Look, it's been about more than just the flesh. It's so ill, I can still never catch my breath. It's so real. And you know, so ill, right? He could also be still playing on CDC, uh, the cough back, COVID, but he's so ill, he can't even catch his breath. Yo, are you guys catching all these? Because I'm, I'm reaching for the bars. Like, I got six hands in this bad boy. It's not the proximity. Look, it's been about more than just the flesh. It's so ill, I can still never. He talked about racing with the baton. If you think of a baton, you normally think of the police force, right? In me, where you rotating is not the proximity. Look, it's been about more than just the flesh. It's so ill, I can still never catch my breath. It's so real in the field, so protect your neck like you was in a shout out Wu Tang, right? Protect your neck. Where you rotating is not the proximity. Look, it's been about more than just the flesh. It's so ill, I can still never catch my breath. It's so real in the field, so, so protect, protect your neck like you was in a seven seal playing chess with death. I figure. The seventh seal, now, now that's a, I don't think, I, I think in the ninth or 10th grade, we had a reference that, um, that's actually, uh, what is that, Russian? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know a lot about it, but it's a, it's a movie. Um, it's basically, I think it was the early 50s, maybe 60s. Uh, it's a fantasy film, um, but basically it's, it's during the Black Death, if I'm not mistaken. But it's, uh, it, it's something about uh, this, this knight, right? It's medieval knight. And he's playing a game of chess. And I believe he's playing the game of chess uh, with what's like the personification of death, right? And again, it's just a fantasy film. Um, but this is something from yesteryear. I wouldn't expect anybody listening to this to, unless they were in my high school class. Because even then, I was just like, is this, is this the best we can do? This is what we're referencing. So many uh, black authors, African American authors, Na Native American, Latin here in the U.S. And were you referencing something from Russia? Now, in fact, I don't think it's Russian. Uh, let me know in the comments if you know anything else about it. But uh, I know it was foreign. Freedom is above and beyond DuPont's registry. You ain't racing with the baton, you not getting me. Where you rotating is not the proximity. Look, it's been about more than just the flesh. It's so ill, I can still never catch my breath. It's so... You know what? It's Swedish. I'm pretty sure. Real in the field, so protect your neck like you was in a seven seal playing chess with death. I figure I'll be a sage for the rest of my days the way I saw... A sage, that's Greek. Um, and that's basically... Um, like consulting, uh, it means you have wisdom. I was going to say consulting with the greats that have wisdom, but I think with the, the way he's saying it, uh, he said, I'll be a sage for the rest of my days. It's like an old wise one, if you would. Like you was in a seven seal playing chess with death. I figure I'll be a sage for the rest of my days. The way I surf to the stage on the crest of a wave, like a black pharaoh that suckled on the breast of a slave. If you place me on a page, don't mess up the name. It goes... T-A-R, one eye like a monocle, the last astronaut. One eye like a monocle, right? Think of the Monopoly man. That's that one uh, when they got, uh, I'm glad my eyebrows are on point if I took my glasses off, right? <laughs> but uh, it's the, the monocle, right? The, ooh, what, is the, what are you doing? The old, uh, you know, uh, that's the, the old peanut man face, right? But he's talking about his name. I think he's spelling Tariq, right? His name is Tariq Char uh, Trotter. And he's, he's, he's breaking it down there. Press of a slave, if you place me on a page, don't mess up the name, it goes T-A-R, one eye like a monocle, the last astronomical master of the chronicle Q spelling of it is with a K and not a Q I break it down to particles and monocles Dark and mellow, slick, McArthur, fellow prophet of rage An audio slave like Morello, I was raised Yo, in my he's dropping so much there, I don't know uh, He said MacArthur fellow Um I think of the MacArthur Fellowship, which is here in uh, right outside of Chicago. Um, 
let me just run that back to understand context a bit more. Astronomical master of the chronicle. True spelling of it is with a K and not a Q. I break it down to particles and molecules. Dark or mellow, slick, McGoss, a fellow prop for the rage. An audio slave like Morello. I was raised in my form. Yo, so I don't know, you know, dark or mellow, right? He's uh, playing on, you know, colorism or if you would, like the, the different complexions. Um, but saying slick MacArthur fellow, prophet of rage, um, he might be talking about Douglas MacArthur. Uh, this was an American military leader that was uh, during World War II. Uh, you know, he was like general of the army, right? He was chief of staff to the United States Army. Uh, but I wouldn't understand the reference when he says prophet of rage. Now, he did say audio slave. Um, you know, if, if, if he tied it to prophets of rage, right? Uh, many people know um, when you hear audio slave, you probably think of Chris Cornell, right? But yeah, that's a that's a, a rock group, right? Audio slave. Um, I like the song. Uh, what is that? I am the highway. What is it? I am not your rolling wheel. I am the highway. I am not your uh, I am this night. It's a, it's a, it's a deep song. It's pretty good. I might actually do a breakdown of it. Um, now he said uh, Tom Morello, um, or audio slave like Morello. Um, a, a lot of people don't realize. Uh, you know, again, you think of Chris Cornell when most people hear audio slave, um, but there's a dude, uh, Tom Morello. Uh, he's a musician. He's actually a rapper too. Um, uh, but he's a you know, songwriter, actor, but he's also a political activist. Um, but he's best known for, um, he used to be with Rage Against the Machine, right? And then he was with Audio Slave. Um, but he was also a member of a group called Prophets of Rage. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that's what he referenced there. Mess up the name, it goes T-A-R-1-I like a monocle The last astronomical master of the chronicle True spelling of it is with a K and not a Q I break it down to particles and molecules Dark yeah. metal slick, McGoss, a fellow prop for the rage An audio slave like, like Morello I was raised in my formative stage Right in the ghetto where they made me to not be afraid Nor to settle, I'm uh, a what? Never be afraid and never settle, right? Never settle for less Always push the bar forward I don't care where you are in life Life. I don't care how bad shit gets. You always have to inch by inch push forward. That's it. That that really is the key. You never know, but you can't stay stagnant. Always be moving, bro. Fight the ghetto where they made me to not be afraid, nor to settle. I'm the one and only son of young Lieutenant Thomas X. Not a He's referencing his dad, right? We know that his uh, his mom and dad uh, were members of the Nation of Islam. Uh, his dad was murdered when he was really young. But his dad is Lieutenant Thomas X. So uh, that's who he's referring to. One and only son of young Lieutenant Thomas X. Knowledge, wisdom, common sense. Never mind the rest. Trying to find out of where it's absolutely out of less. The spook sat by the door, devil behind the desk. Hey, yo, here, that's another great reference, right? That's Sam Greenlee. Um, that, that, this is a fictional story. Um, and it actually ties in closely with the Nation of Islam, the Black Panther Party. Uh, when you look at Nation of Islam and Malcolm X's assassin, assassination, uh, one would say the CIA and FBI uh, had a hand in that, right? Um, but the spook who sat by the door, this was, uh, keep in mind, 1964, we had what uh, the Civil Rights Act, right, of 1964. Waited two years, and we had the formation of the Black Panthers Party, right? That was in 1966. 1969 is when this book came out, The Spook Who Sat by the Door by Sam Greenlee. Um, but it's a fictional story. Uh, this cat named Dan, um, and basically he's the first black CIA officer, um, and it, it just goes with his uh, infiltration of the, the training groups and political groups and uh, gathering intelligence, um, guerrilla war warfare against the CIA, uh, but a lot of people can tie it back to what happened with Malcolm X and them turning a blind eye. You know, uh, the CIA had already infiltrated the Black Panther Party, supposedly, um, but, yo, know, there's a lot of history there. If you research, again, a lot of these people that he's talking about, uh, you can start connecting the dots to some of your history, right? 
this is not just black history, this is United States history. Uh, it's so important because you're not getting this anywhere else except Blackish University. Enroll for the course, baby. Ghetto what it made me to not be afraid, nor to settle. I'm the one and only son of young Lieutenant Thomas X. Knowledge, wisdom, common sense, never mind the rest. Trying to find honor where it's absolutely honorless. The spook sat by the door, devil, devil behind the desk. desk. Some would say that's the uh, that's the most dangerous position, right? The person that's behind the desk. It's not the person out fighting you on the street. It's the person that their weapon is the pen, right? Well, during the Donald Trump presidency uh, in 2016, uh, when a lot of people were like, arrest Donald Trump. And I'm like, arrest him for what? Right. You have to, um, you know, I, I study constitutional law and understand the process, but we have to be able to charge him with a uh, adequate crime. Right. Um, but I, I would tell a lot of people like, yo, I don't know if you know anything about Mike Pence, the VP. Mike Pence is batshit freaking crazy. Mike Pence has some very, um, very, if you think of it as a pep uh, spectrum, right? Uh, you think of the bell curve, right? Uh, he's on a very extreme end of conservative. Uh, his extreme uh, beliefs are, are not good for the country. But the thing about Mike Pence that's so dangerous is he looks at you with a smile and a good handshake. The one thing about Donald Trump, even though I didn't support his presidency, I don't support Biden either, I don't consider myself a Republican or a Democrat, I consider myself an independent, free-thinking person, right? Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, is, is so dangerous about Mike Pence is he'll smile in your face, look the part. Donald Trump, he just was an animal, right? He'd say, oh, grab her by the pussy, you know? It's like, God damn, bro, so shit. Um, they were trying to find a way, it's like, yo, uh, rooting for the president to fail is like being on a plane, right? And wishing the pilot would fail. Like, you know, I might not support you, but I still w want what's best for the country. Um, at least Trump told you who he was from the jump. Mike Pence, uh, he'll play the part, but it's, it's what he's doing behind closed doors, behind the desk. That's uh, really the most devilish, right? Because uh, a lot of people don't see what's going on behind closed doors. Common sense, never mind the rest. Trying to find honor where it's absolutely honorless. The spook sat by the door, oh, devil, devil behind, behind the desk. desk. I'm oh. thankful that I'm wide awake for this. Diaspora's Afro pick like Hank Willis. Ooh. Any activism. Uh, for those that have ever been to South Philly or uh, know anything about Philadelphia, um, there's an artist named Hank Willis. Um, I believe it's actually Hank Willis Thomas, but he called him Hank Willis, I believe, uh, just a second ago. Uh, he put this huge uh, art piece. It's like this eight foot tall Afro pick in Philly. And if I'm not mistaken, um, it's at a place called Monument Lab. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, he did a 25 foot version of it. It's legit an Afro pick. And it's a, a huge display. Um, but yo, I love that. Let me hear the reference again. I'm thankful that I'm wide awake for this. Yes. And I'm thankful I'm wide awake for this. He could be talking about being woke, right? Uh, being enlightened, understanding the big picture uh, that a lot of people unfortunately don't. A lot of people are asleep. Honorless. The spook sat by the door, devil behind the desk. I'm thankful that I'm wide awake for this. Diaspora's Afro pick like Hank Willis. Any activism is bad. Yeah. <laughs> he said the Afro pick like Hank Willis, yo. The bank business. America's always been safe for straight killers. Yo, the trail was tailor made for me to fail. The killer beat killed or end with me in jail. It's funny how the new Mark Twain could be Chappelle. And <laughs> shut down. Shout out Dave Chappelle, right? He said, yeah, Mark Twain, the. the, the storyteller of our generation mixes it with comedy but also infuses knowledge and and, uh, and a backstory that's what he say he say it's funny the new mark twain uh, really could be dave chappelle that's could, how he could be looked at me in jail it's funny how the new mark twain could be chappelle and we shut down the starving trend if we prevail i won't be reduced to simply a trope it proves everything a trope is uh is an expression if you would it's like uh, when you tell someone, stop and smell the roses, right? That's considered a trope. For me to fail, the killer be killed or end with me in jail. It's funny how the new Mark Twain could be Chappelle. And we shut down the starving trend if we prevail. I won't be reduced to simply a trope. It proves Wu everything that I wrote a slippery slope. It's hard to cope. It's still push. Up on atomically, Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses. Can't define you, I'll be dropping these mockeries. Lyrically perform armed robbery. Flee with the lottery. Possibly they slaughter me. Man, my memory will... I 
I can remember the most useless knowledge. Uh, but you asked me what I ate this morning, and I'm like, did I eat? <laughs> right? Did I take my medicine? Did I? Where's my phone? Right? And my wife is always like, oh my god. But I'll remember some old thing from history class in sixth grade, and I'll reference it on a video. She's like, really, really? <laughs> yeah, run it back. Fail. I won't be reduced to simply a choke. It proves everything that I wrote for slippery slope. It's hard to cope and still push the envelope with your mind's far beyond this kaleidoscope. <laughs> Yo, and yeah, the a kaleidoscope, that's like a, ch a children's toy. Um, normally they have, I think when they originally came out, they had broken glass or like stained glass in them. But you can look at it from one end and it's like a cylinder. Uh, and you can see all types of amazing, it's almost like if you were to take stained glass and the sun shining through it. But it's all these smaller particles, right? That's a kaleidoscope. Uh, I don't think they're made with stained glass or glass anymore. If people are still looking for kaleidoscopes, go and still push the envelope with your minds far beyond this kaleidoscope. And yo, the way they cut throw the brother, do we not bleed? And from the shots, do we not run at top speed? While the black, blue, brown, bow leg at a knock knee. Every weapon's not made by Martin and Lockheed. Are we? No. Uh, Martin and Lockheed is a, a weapons, they're an arms dealer, one of the largest, if I'm, if, or it might be the largest. They do, um, they're connected to the aerospace industry, arms, uh, any sort of defense, information security, uh, high end tech. Uh, you know, this is, this is a worldwide company. Um, that's uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, Martin and Lockheed. It was, uh, it's a name, I forget the, the actual full names, but it was a merger of two similar companies and it was uh they, they had the, the top person so they took the last name of each person i believe and from the shots do we not run at top speed while the black blue brown bow leg at a knock knee mm -hmm. every weapon's not made by martin and lockheed are we detained if they say we cannot leave am i insane if i tell you i cannot breathe message oh, shout out george floyd right yeah, the, you know, I can't breathe, right? Am I insane if I tell you that? Are you fighting me because I'm telling you that I actually cannot breathe? Um, he said, are we detained if they say that we cannot leave, uh, right? Because if you know anything about constitutional law, unreasonable search and seizure and all these things, like the police cannot just pull you over randomly. And one of the things that they train you to say are, you know, am I detained? Yeah, am I able to leave? Because they'll try to trick you to think that you can't leave, but in reality, you can depending on the probable cause or why they pulled you over. We cannot leave. Am I insane if I tell you I cannot breathe? Messages written in language they cannot read. Ooh. Public enemies, Chuck D's and Hank, Shock Lee's. No. Stick with your... I love that he says there are messages written in languages they cannot read. Because um, one would argue that that's intellectual hip hop like this, right? There's so much knowledge that he's trying to pass down. He's trying to get out to the world. And you have to understand these references to understand the context, right? Understand what he's talking about. Like, for instance, he, he just said a public enemy, right? A lot of young bucks probably know loosely what po po public enemy is. They probably know Chuck D. But a lot of people don't know uh, Hank Shockley. Uh, Hank Shockley is uh, he's, uh, in the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's a Grammy-nominated producer. He's a DJ. Uh, he's a music executive. Um, he's worn a lot of hats, um, but I think most people would know him from founding the group Public Enemy. Um, no, run that back. Public enemies, Chuck D's and Hank Shock Lee's. Stick with your preposterous beliefs. They pull up and pop. Preposterous, I think a lot of people get it, but for any young books there, it's like uh, contra contrary to reason uh, or co common sense, right? It's like ridiculous. Like, that's preposterous, right? Uh, that's uh, using it in context. Enemies, Chuck D's and Hank Shock Lee's. Stick with your preposterous beliefs. They pull up and pop and let the block perish in peace. And this speech could be the last word of the deceased that make my next mixtape of posthumous release. Ooh. But listen, spilling the black after the death, right? Ooh. Perish in peace, and this speech could be the last word of the deceased that make my next mixtape of posthumous release. But listen, Ooh. spilling the black man's blood so iconic, I go hard today because tomorrow's not promised. Due to knowledge, you could be crowned. King to and common, God forbid. Ooh. Go back to back. Oh, that reference, a lot of people wouldn't know that full name. What did he say? Two Tank Hamen. All right, he said you could be crowned King Two Tank Hamen. Uh, a lot of people know him uh, simply as King Tut. Right, this was an old uh, ancient Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, he was the last of his royal family to rule. Uh, this was the 18th dynasty. 
Um, this is like the, uh, you know, Egyptian history, if you would. Yo, uh, King Tut, uh, you'd find him in any museum. He's normally, he's one of the most well-known, uh, but a lot of people don't know the full name. Love so iconic, I go hard today because tomorrow's not promising. Through the knowledge, you could be crowned. King Tut and Common, God forbid, go back to packs of top ramen. The overlook of Beck is an astronaut problem. That's no. down, down a second to NASA, start calling. Ask for black thought, I'm a master, probably never be captured. Meccas with a last report. So what's the debate? The statements and everything I create. The negatives not relative, they don't relay. That's cool, it is what it is. Can I be great? Waiting for the big payback, like it's a to to the <laughs> waiting for payback like it's a rebate right payback when you get money back that's a, a, a rebate you know a lot of jokes about quarterbacks and whatnot but you know think of the menards 11 percent off sale right but what do you do after you buy a lot of construction stuff at menards you have to fill out the rebate form and you get money back in the mail that you can only spend at menards but he said, yo, he's uh, the play on words with payback, right? For the big payback, like it's a rebate to elevate to the V12 from the V8. A whip so fast that it's impossible to be late. And then so... Uh, I, I, uh, one of my guys used to own this uh, as this auto repair company in Chicago. And he had these uh, uh, Rolls Royce that came with a driver that, you know, people would come in from out of town. They need someone in a driver and they're looking around. They could find him and he can make a little side money doing it. Obviously, there's not a lot of people looking for Rolls Royces all the time. Uh, so he was one of my guys. He's throwing me the keys. Every weekend, I'd be in Chicago just pushing the Rolls Royce Phantom. And it was a V12 car. And you pull up, and some little dude's like revving his engine next to him. And he just, and just take off on that ass. You know, get back to it. To rebate, to elevate, to the V12 from the V8. A whip so fast that it's, it's impossible. impossible to be late. And it's all love, but it's impossible if we hate. It deflates the wind from against ourselves. Try to keep Ooh. it in check like a... It deflates the wind. Uh, what do you say from uh, from against our sails, right? He's talking about a sailboat, but taking the wind out of something is like uh, slowing down your momentum, right? Uh it's the wind from against our sails. Try to keep it in check like the Prince of Wales. Toss any the, like the Prince of Wales, he's referring to the Czech Republic. Uh, but he's also saying like to keep someone in check. Yo, uh, who else caught that bar right there? Give me the... But it's impossible if we hate. It deflates the wind from against our sails. Try to keep it in check like the Prince of Wales. Toss <laughs> any infidels against the rails. Heavy metal motley crew. No Vince McNails. I'm in Chanel. But... Yo, again, he's referencing so many people from yesteryear. It would be hard for Young Bucks to understand this. Uh, Motley Crue is a, a heavy metal band, right? Uh, they were uh, formed in L.A. in, uh, I think, 81, 82. Um, but the group was founded by, they have a variety of uh, uh, Tommy Lee. I think a lot of people know Tommy Lee. That was the drummer. Um, who was it? Uh, Mick Mars. Uh, and the lead singer was Vince Nail. Uh, that's what he's referencing there. Try to keep it in check like the Prince of Wales Toss any infidels against the rails Heavy metal motley crew, no Vince McNails I'm in Chanel, but still go against the grail If we talk about my life, it's probably a movie Who will play me and my wife? Taraji and Chewy back in the day, maybe a young Taraji and Chewy, so he's talking about playing a movie about his life He's obviously talking about Taraji Henson But Chewy, uh, who's that? Is he talking about Chewbacca? The Star Wars reference? I don't know how that would make sense. I mean, the person who played Chewbacca, that was uh, you know, Peter Mayhew, right? Uh, the dude that, uh, the really big dude that, I think he has a bunch of health issues. But I don't under, let me know if you guys know uh, the Chewy reference. He said Taraji and Chewy. It's McNails, I'm in Chanel, but still go against the grail. If we talk about my life, it's probably a movie. Who will play me and my wife? Taraji and Chewy, back in the day, maybe a young Icy and Ruby. My chops is like Canada Lee, so you're truly oh, for he said so much there, right? Uh, Aussie, he said Aussie and Ruby. Uh, I, think that's, I think he's talking about Aussie Davis. Um, I don't really know too much about his work, um, but these are actors from yesteryear. But that's why he's saying back in the day. Um, I remember this quote he has, though. Ossie Davis says, the way to love all women is to love one woman well. <laughs> and that's a famous quote of his. Um, but Ruby D, she's from Raisin in the Sun, right? And who did he say there? He said Canada something. Play me and my wife, Taraji and Chewy. Back in the day, maybe a young Ossie and Ruby. My chops is like Canada Lee. So you're truly full of... Chops is like Canada Lee. Canada Lee... Um, 
<clears throat> this was a dude that was born. His actual name is like Leonard or uh, Leonard Cornelius, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this dude was a boxer. <clears throat> and then he became an actor, but he paved the way for a lot of uh, black dudes to become actors. Now, I don't know if he was a singer. I know he was a musician, uh, but I thought of him more of like a, a, a DJ or a VJ, if you would. Uh, but he's talking about his chops. Uh, normally, you refer to someone's chops or their ability to sing. Um, so, you know, like this dude was in Macbeth and stuff. So I'm sure he could sing, but uh, I don't know if anybody's catching that reference of Canada Lee. Again, his name is like Leonard, uh, I think it's Leonard Cornelius, if I'm not mistaken. My life is probably a movie. Who will play me and my wife? Taraji and Chewy back in the day, maybe a young Ossie and Ruby. My chops is like Canada Lee. So you're truly for the Oscar. I started smoking weed like a roster when we lost Cassandra. That was hard to find the what I uh, Cassandra. When we lost Cassandra. Uh, I think it's more than likely he's referring to Sandra, uh, Sandra Bland. I, I would be, uh, I can't think of another Sandra. Uh, but uh, Sandra Bland, uh, right, that was that like 30 year old chick. She was a black chick who was, uh, she was actually found hung, right? She uh, hanged, if you would, in a jail cell. Um, but she was arrested for something minor. It was like a traffic stop. Uh, the cops were giving her an issue. And then three days later, all of a sudden, she's dead. And a lot of people are like, yo, she wasn't suicidal, right? A lot of people, uh, even though it was uh, ruled a suicide, uh, there were a lot of protests against her arrest and uh, the cause of death. Um, a lot of people thought it had something to do with racial violence. Canada Lee, so you're truly for the Oscar. I started smoking weed like a roster when we lost Cassandra. That was hard to find, but I refuse to break down or stay sober while history repeats itself like a mantra. I got too much more. Like a mantra is when you're, you know, you repeat it to yourself to bring it into existence, right? I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm pretty. I know my beard is on point. I know this is an excellent video. Man, I hope the masses love it. Oh, I'm beautiful. My beard is on point. I love my hat. I love my hat, right? <laughs> it's just, mantras are a lot more than that, but uh, that's an example. For to live for, the demon and the Lord out here in the turf war. It's the way that the whole world is worth for. Probably what the wildlife reclaiming the earth for. And hey, yeah, Philly stand up. Oh, shit. Bro, two to one five again. He's referencing Philly. Yo, that's probably one of the deepest songs um, that I've heard from Black Thought, where it's just references, references, references. It's just so incredible that he's doing this uh, off the top of the dome. Yes, it's it's yes, it's written. I guess it's not a freestyle off the top of the dome, but he 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 holds this much knowledge, right? And he's able to flow and just, he's riding the beat just like a legend should. But I think we uh, he makes it look a lot easier than it is. Man, if you're a fan of these intellectual breakdowns, right? It's a five-minute song, but it's a one-hour breakdown. It's because there's so much knowledge packed in there. And we have to expand on that, right? We have to understand exactly what he's saying. If you're a fan of the intellectual breakdown, uh, don't forget to not just like the video, but subscribe to the channel. Tell your homies. Tell your people that love hip hop, right? That love music, uh, so we can start growing our base. Uh, we've only started right at the uh, start of 2022, and we're already at about four or five hundred subscribers. So it's growing well, uh, growing relatively quick, and we're going to keep growing that 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 base. Now we look forward to seeing you on the other channels and look deeper in the same playlist. And there's a lot of other Black Dot breakdowns, but breakdowns of some other. Uh, really good artists like Toby Wigway, uh, right? Kanye West, um, uh, Royce the Five Nine. Uh, I mean, we got we got uh, Marlon Craft. I mean, there's quite a few um, that are just very. They're saying something. They're promoting positive change. They're talking about activism. They're talking about uh, socioeconomics, right? There's just so much going on. I think it's important that we get the word out there. I look forward to seeing you on our other uh, reactions.